Rothschild Sabaton Zionist State of Israel preparing the future home for the returning ten tribes of the House of Israel. The divine mission to restore the lost sheep, tribes, of the House of Israel. Part 11 Section 13 By Robert Mock M.D. Robert Mock at BibleSearchers.com April 2009 Topics The Jewish Connection the Sabbatine's goal, to eliminate the opiate of the Jews. Jacob Frank, the Islamic Dalma emissary to Europe. The Frankists, Jesuits, and Rothschild Revolution in Europe. The Rothschild-Rockefeller Connection. The Labor Zionist Movement of 1880-1917. The Jewish Connection, the Sabbatine's goal, to eliminate the opiate of the Jews. Almost 1600 years after Joseph of Arimathea and the twelve Jewish Kuldees, refugees, were exiled from Judea and landed on the coastline of Marseilles, France, a new messianic phenomenon erupted upon this globe in Central Europe. The Kuldee Nazarene mission was to bring the Jewish messianic message of salvation and redemption for all mankind, Jews and Gentiles alike. The new apostate Jewish messianism was to bring an era of destruction, insurrection, imperialism, oppression, world wars, holocausts, and massive economic chaos. The fullest revelation of this false messianic idealism is only being revealed today as the entire economic world order, built on premises of fraud and deceit appears to be collapsing before our own eyes. The year was 1666, and the Turkish Kabbalist, not Kabbalist, Kabbalist, or Kabbalist, Jew, Shabbatai Tsevai announced to his Jewish followers that the day of the Messiah had come. Actually that day was calculated in advance to be on a specific date, June 18, 1666. With a little insight we begin to see the strange relationships of this specific date to the arrival of the future anti-Messiah in the years just preceding the coming of the true Jewish Messiah. On this date, the pristine mystical truths of the world of the divine as given and preserved by the Jewish sages began to be corrupted by the demonic forms of evil in Christian Kabbalism or Kabbalism and Islamic Kabbalism. This date would be denoted by the triple numerical insignia, 666 for the date of Shabbatai Tsevai's messiahship was to be on June, 6th month, 18, 6 plus 6 T plus 6, in the year of 1000 plus 666. The Jews sold all of their homes and businesses, and were waiting in expectation on the hillsides for the entrance into a new messianic age. This event was not unlike the Great Awakening in New England seaboard states of the United States when on October 22, 1844, the Karite Jewish appointed day of Yom Kippur, the early Adventists, Christians awaiting a literal advent of the Messiah, quit their jobs sold their businesses and homes for pennies to the dollar to await the literal coming of the Messiah on hilltops and farms in the New England states of the United States. What was also little perceived the God of Israel was preparing to launch in the year of 1666 the prophetic players that would bring this world of corruption and greed to its knees and begin the days of redemption and restoration. The Almighty One would prepare this globe for the fires of His judgment at the time of the event. He was also preparing the primary actors, the Jews, and the lost tribes of Israel for the final act of the drama of the ages. Shabbatai Tsevai the false Jewish messiah in the year of 1666. These Sabbatan actors would arise from within the Jewish faith, yet they would soon abandon the commands of the Torah and reject the God of Israel as they spread their messianic faith around the globe. The quest of Shabbatai Tsevai was embedded not only in medieval Judaism, but also in Islam, and within the heart of apostate Christianity. The very heart of mystical Judaism that came from the revelations of the true Jewish Kabbalists tree of life as envisioned and revealed in print by the esteemed Jewish sage Rabbi Isaac Luria in the 16th century at Saif was now ripped from its authentic Torah foundation, corrupted and remolded into the heart of Roman Catholicism by Jewish Jesuits and embedded within the heart of the Islamic faith by the secret Dalma society, later known as the Turks. Shabbatai Tsevai, as he first started his Jewish movement also selected his own false prophet, called Nathan Levi of Gaza. It may be just an interesting fact, 
that out of the heartland of the people that would become the greatest antagonists and bitter enemies of the Jews, the Hamas chapter of the Muslim Brotherhood, in the 21st century would give birth also to the Prophet who would help the new Messiah twist and contort the true Kabbalists' understanding of the world of the Divine. They would turn their theology into the most fulminate and virulent form of spiritual anti-Semitism, that was anti-Jewish, anti-Judaism, anti-Torah, and anti-God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from its very core and foundation. According to Shabbatai Tsevai, the messianic days of the redemption were upon us and when this era arrived, God of the Sabbateens would permit everything. All the prohibitions by the God of Israel in the Torah would be rescinded in the new messianic era. In the Ten Commandments, it said, Do not kill but when the Messiah comes, they were permitted to kill. These same Ten Commands also said, Do not commit adultery yet in when the Messiah comes, it was said that you may commit adultery. These same commandments said, Remember the seventh day, seventh day Sabbath Shabbat, to keep it holy, yet when the Messiah comes, any day you wish to worship could be your holy day. It was also the chief blessing of the followers of the false Jewish Messiah, Shabbatai Tsevai, called Sabbateens, when they said, Blessed is he who permits the forbidden. This was their most profound blessing and it swept over half of the Jewish people in Europe within its clutches. Famed 17th century Talmudist, Rabbi Jacob Emden Would it be profound enough also to learn that Shabbatai Tsevai was also born in Smyrna, Turkey? The key to this satanic-inspired transformation from true Torah into an anti-Semitic virus against the Torah revelation of God was exposed just before the end of the first century CE. Here we meet the Jewish Apostle John who gave the verdict by the God of Israel in the revelation of Jesus the Messiah, Book of Revelation, when it made this expose of the people of Smyrna. Revelation 2 9-10 And to the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead, and came to life, I know your works, tribulation, and poverty, but you are rich, and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. It was the esteemed Talmudist Rabbi Jacob Emden in the early 17th century that became the first to expose the dangers of the teachings of the Sabbateens in the European region of Poland. It was Bible searchers in the year of 2006 that investigated this era in the series of articles titled, Jesus the Pharisee from the School of, Bait, Hillel in the Eyes of Talmudic Scholar Rabbi Jacob Emden. Rabbi Emden became the most passionate defender of covenanted Orthodox Judaism against the infiltration of the Sabbateens and the profound destruction of what they were doing in the heart of Judaism in Europe. It was also during this great crisis of faith for the Jewish people with the messianic uprising of the false messiah Shabbatai Tsevai that Rabbi Jacob Emden went back to review all the fifty-odd messiahs that had risen over the prior sixteen centuries. Shabbatai Tsevi enthroned as the messiah Jewish publication, Tikkun, Amsterdam, 1666. When he came to the life and ministry of Yahshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Messiah, in the first century Judea, he found a Jewish Messiah that was profoundly different than all the rest. Here was a Jewish Messiah that not only lived the life of Torah, but lived and taught that his disciples were to live the precepts of all the Torah above and beyond the letter of the law. In his charges against the heresy of Shabbatai Tsevai, Rabbi Emden wrote a letter defending the life, ministry, and the Torah of Yahshua the Messiah in the letter of Rabbi Jacob Emden, the Seder Olam Rabbi Vezuda, 1757, to the Jewish Council of Four Lands. Here was the opinion of the sage of Judaism concerning Yahshua Hanatsri, Jesus the Nazarene. Rabbi Jacob Emden certainly, therefore, there is no doubt that one who seeks truth will agree with our thesis, that the Nazarene and his apostles never meant to abolish the Torah of Moses from one who was born a Jew. Likewise did Paul write in his letter to the Corinthians, I Corinthians, that each should adhere to the faith in which each was called? They therefore acted in accordance with the Torah by forbidding circumcision to Gentiles, according to the Halakha, as it is forbidden to one who does not accept the yoke of the commandments. They knew that it would be too difficult for the Gentiles to observe the Torah of Moses. They therefore forbade them to circumcise, and it would suffice that they observe the seven Nohide commandments, 
as commanded upon them through the Halakha from Moses at Sinai. It is therefore a habitual saying of mine, not as a hypocritical flatterer, God forbid, for I am of the faithful believers of Israel, and I know well that the remnant of Israel will not speak falsehood, nor will their mouths contain a deceitful tongue, that the Nazarene brought about a double kindness in the world. On the one hand, he strengthened the Torah of Moses majestically, as mentioned earlier, and not one of our sages spoke out more emphatically concerning the immutability of the Torah. And on the other hand, he did much good for the Gentiles, providing they do not turn about his intent as they please, as some foolish ones have done because they did not fully understand the intent of the authors of the Gospels. Yet the virus of destruction continued to permeate through the Sabbatan Jews around the world. It would not be until just before the 200th anniversary, 1776-1976, of the Sabbatan Masonic birth of the United States of America that Rabbi Marvin Antelman, the Jewish Chief Justice of the Jewish Supreme Court of America became the first modern Jewish rabbi to expose the modern agenda of the Jewish Sabbateans. In the year of 1974 he wrote a book called To Eliminate the Opiate, Volume I that you will find heading the list of every classic list of books on modern conspiracies. It was be followed by the sequel, To Eliminate the Opiate, Volume II, 24 years later in the year of 1998 that exposed the vast influence of the Sabbateans within the modern Jewish Zionist state of Israel, and why their symbiotic relationships with the globalists was and is so profound to Jewish Orthodoxy and Covenanted Jews. Former Chief Justice of the Rabbinic Court, Rabbi Marvin Antelman this was also the same Rabbi Marvin Antelman who as the Chief Justice of the Jewish Supreme Court in the United States, excommunicated Henry Kissinger from Judaism in the 1974 Rabbinic Council for his ties with the Council on Foreign Relationship and as the United States Secretary of State sought to destroy Israel during the Yom Kippur War of 1976 and to this day, Rabbi Antelman continues to expose the criminal activities of these Jewish Sabbateans. Henry Kissinger it was Rabbi Antelman, who has been the most profound voice exposing the satanic roots of the Jewish Sabbateans. With great deliberation, he exposed the insidious evil that the Sabbateans were committing to destroy the Orthodox Jewish people all around the world. It was also Antelman's most famous protege, the Jewish investigative reporter and author, Barry Chamish who Bible searchers has used in the past for his investigative studies on the corruption and evil within the labor Zionists of Israel. Henry Kissinger, the Jewish 56th United States Secretary of State, 1973-1977. In the following article, Barry Chamish documents the insidious evil the Sabbatan Jews have committed upon the Orthodox Jewish people. It will be this expose taken from the written manuscript of a speech Chamish gave just before the expulsion of the 10,000 Jewish Orthodox farmers, nurserymen, and families from Gush Katif at Gaza that will be the foundation of this manuscript. Part of this expose will be Ariel Sharon, as the Prime Minister of the Labor Zionist Government of the State of Israel in 2005, who exiled his own Jewish Orthodox people, for the Labor Zionist Government of the State of Israel. What we will learn he created thousands of Jewish refugees, of which a majority of productive farm families are still refugees within their own land of Israel. We given credit to the brave and intrepid Barry Chamish for his speech titled, Shaftai Tsevai, Labor Zionism, and the Holocaust that is now in book form by the same name. It was the Sabbateens who were the first to believe with all their hearts that the Messianic era would be instituted when Jews would systematically begin breaking every law of the Torah and defy their judgments by the God of Israel. Their era of the Messiah never came to their expectations in the 17th century. In fact, Mermd for the Sultan of Turkey, 1648-1687, in September 1666 had Shabbatai Tsevai arrested. For a while he was allowed to have his own royal court in prison until he was given the ultimatum and a promise. If the rabbi would give up his Judaism and his Torah, renounce Judaism, and convert to Islam, the sultan would relinquish his sentence of a long, tortuous death. To the amazement of the Orthodox Jews, not only did he convert to Islam, but he twisted his interpretations of the Torah and took a large percentage of Judaism into Islam with him. Yet. A problem existed, 
soon may of the followers became crushed or disillusioned with Sabbatan theology and returned back to Orthodox Judaism. Jacob Frank, the Islamic Dalma emissary to Europe. Even so, a larger group of Jews did convert to Islam and became a cult in Turkey called the Dalma cult, for it was they, who proclaimed, we infiltrate Islam and other religions, but keep our Sabbatan beliefs with us at all times. And to this day, the Dalma continue to infiltrate into other religions and cults to our modern era. Shabaitites v as a prisoner of the Turkish Sultan in Abidus, Ketzergeschicht, 1701, published in the 1901-1906 Jewish Encyclopedia. At the time while Shabaitite Sevi was alive, it was the Turkish cult that were called the Dalma that lay dormant until the years surrounding the 1770s when Jacob Frank, a European Sabbatan who had lived and studied with the Dalma Turks, returned to Europe and spread a new messianic heresy across the continent of Europe. This time, the target was not just to the Jewish people but to the lost tribes of the House of Israel who had populated and now claimed Europe to be their own homeland. With the inward desire that power, greed, and control rules, Yaakov, Jacob, Frank who first went to the elite of the European countries and became a darling in the courts of the royalty. As was written by Bible Searcher's Reflections in the subarticle titled, Jacob Frank and the Jewish Alliance with the Illuminati and the Rothschilds we read. Bible Searcher's Reflections The time of the end did not come and the Millennial Kingdom did not arrive. The works and studies of Shabbatai Zevi went underground. Fifty years later, Yaakov ben Judah Leib Frankovich, 1726-1791, was born to a Jewish rabbi in Podolia in Old Poland in the region of modern Ukraine. From Poland he traveled to the Middle East as a cloth merchant. There in Turkey he was initiated into the secret Shabbatian rites of Donmesh Shabbatism. When he returned to the Ashkenazi Polish Jews they thought he was a Turkish Sephardi Jew and called him Frank, which in Yiddish means a Sephardi Jew. He soon assumed a new family name, Frank. At the age of 29, 1755, Jacob Frank returned to Poland, he had been fully indoctrinated into the mystical anti-Torah, anti-Talmudic teachings of mystical Shabbatism. He transmitted his teachings to Central Europe. He posed as an Orthodox Sephardi Jew from whence came his name, Frank, which in Jewish Ashkenazi Yiddish means a Sephardi. There he founded the heretical Jewish sect called Frankists. Now accepted by the Sephardi Jews in Poland, Jacob Frank convinced the Roman Catholic bishop of his province in Poland that his Sabbatan group was against the Jewish and were not Jews, but were allies with the Roman Catholic Church in suppressing the Jews. Within his Catholic diocese, the bishop offered Jacob Frank and his followers protection from the Jews. In verification and support of the Roman Catholic Jewish suppression by the Roman Catholics, there suddenly erupted numerous book burnings until all the Jewish Talmuds were destroyed in this Polish diocese. The Burning of the Jewish Talmuds in Poland This act was impressive to his Catholic benefactors for the Catholic hierarchy now felt that they had legitimate allies with the former Jewish Frankists. With the verification of their evil deeds, the Frankists were able to establish a power base in Poland from which to spread their seeds of destruction. What was even more important, they were now financed by the Roman Catholic Church. What the bishop did not know was that his allies that had now become official Roman Catholics were still living dual lives and in their duplicity, within this province of Poland, sexual orgies became the purification of the soul and secretly during the Purim festivals, this day became an annual wife-swapping event for hidden Frankists. They not only debased their new Catholic religion but they also debased their own spiritual heritage in Judaism. Jacob Frank, Yaakov ben Judah Leib Frankovich, 1726-1791 Suddenly the new wave of Catholic conversions came under the ministry of Jacob Frank and the Sabbateens as hundreds and even thousands of Jews were baptized in huge ceremonies. What a revival these were. In one giant baptism ceremony, Jacob Frank officiated with the baptism of 5,000 Jews into Jesuit Illuminati Catholicism but in secret they knew themselves as Frankists not necessarily Roman Catholic Christians. With thousands of new converts under his control, 
Jacob Frank began to organize them into underground or clandestine cells of small and separated groups of whom only he knew and controlled. To the Frankists, this Christian conversion was only an interlude, an intermediate growth stage into the future when the final messianic era would be revealed. As Bible searchers continued, Bible searchers' reflections Jacob Frank soon began to have direct revelations from heaven and admonished his followers to convert to Christianity. They began to practice an underground religion that was anti-Torah and like Shabbatai Zevi and Nathan of Gaza engaged in sexual activities forbidden by Torah. The Halakha of Torah was abandoned for a higher wisdom or knowledge. From the midst of Luria's Kabbalah which was based on the Mosaic Torah, the Frankists claimed a new wisdom, the Torah of Emanations or the Christian Kabbalah which was anti-Torah. As such the Shabbatines and the Frankists corrupted the Jewish prophetic idea of the emanations of God in the Ta'nakh, Old Testament, and instead of subjecting themselves to the emanations of the Almighty by their covenantal relationship with God and obeying His commandments, they reproduced a new Torah of emanations which they could control. They took the spirit of the little horn of Daniel the prophet and in essence proclaimed that they were like God. This Christian conversion was to be an intermediate growth stage to the future and final messianic religion. In 1759, the influence of Frankists caught the eye of the Polish nobility when a large number of Jews converted to Frankism and performed a spectacular ceremony with the sacred rites of mass baptism at Lwów, Poland, Lviv, Ukraine. The Catholic Church filed charges against Jacob Frank and he was imprisoned for the next 13 years, 1760-1773. As soon as Jacob Frank was released from prison, he left the country of Poland and emigrated to Bruno, Austria, now Brno, Czech Republic, where his works caught the eye of the Catholic benefactor, Maria Theresa, the Archduchess of Austria. There in the court of Maria Theresa, Jacob Frank was hired to be the Roman Christian spokesperson to the Jews. Maria Theresa, the Archduchess of Austria painting by Jean Etienne Liotard. Maria Theresa, 1717-1780, was the Archduchess Regnant of Austria, and also the Queen Regnant of Hungary, Croatia, and Bohemia. By her marriage to Francis I of Lorraine, the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, and the last member of the House of the Habsburgs, Maria Theresa, upon the Emperor's death in the year of 1765, became also became the Dowager Queen of the Holy Roman Empire, for she see ruled with her son, Joseph who became the Emperor in that same year. Mary Theresa was an energetic and capable ruler, and she was not only a devout Catholic but within her realm, she became an economic, educational, agricultural, and military reformer. Her conflicts with the Kingdom of Prussia led her countries into the Seven Year War, 1756-1763, and later the War of the Bavarian Succession. It was into the royal court of the Viennese Archduchess that Jacob Frank arrived in the year of 1773, only three years before the signing of the Declaration of Independence in America. Under the royal protection of Maria Theresa, Frank was also planting the seeds of insurrection and international intrigue. Secretly Jacob Frank sent secret emissaries to the Archbishop of the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Tsar of Russia. He wanted them to assist him in the overthrow of Poland and the Polish Catholic Church. Within the Frankist cells, Frank had also taken the role of a messiah, like Shabbatai Tsevai. He even established his own miniature royal court where this Jewish messiah now turned Roman Catholic specifically selected 12 female disciples who were his concubines and 12 male disciples who were to be his emissaries. The 17-year-old, Kaiserin Maria Theresa Tochter the daughter of Karl VI. Von Habsburg Erster Reich painting by Andreas Mahler. The Archduchess of Vienna was no fool and soon began to suspect that Frank was not a Christian but a Jew in Christian clothing. Excommunicated earlier by the Jewish rabbis, later imprisoned by the Polish Catholics, he finally was expelled from Poland and Vienna. At the age of 60, 1786, Jacob Frank moved to a small German village, Offenbach, where in luxury as the Baron of Offenbach he spent the last five years of his life. There, 
Jacob Frank held his own court of 600 attendees to the small village of Offenbach near Frankfurt, Germany. The greatest of mysteries that with the loss of the largest of the Austrian dowager Maria Theresa in Vienna, who were the new benefactors that came to Jacob Frank's aid. The Frankist, Jesuit, Rothschild Revolution in Europe and America I care not what puppet is placed on the throne of England to rule the empire. The man that controls Britain's money supply controls the British Empire. And I control the money supply. Baron Nathan Mayer de Rothschild, 1777-1836 Gentlemen, I have had men watching you for a long time and I am convinced that you have used the funds of the bank to speculate in the breadstuffs of the country. When you won, you divided the profits amongst you, and when you lost, you charged it to the bank. You tell me that if I take the deposits from the bank and annul its charter, I shall ruin 10,000 families. That may be true, gentlemen, but that is your sin. Should I let you go on, you will ruin 50,000 families, and that would be my sin. You are a den of vipers and thieves. Attributed to President Andrew Jackson, who in 1836 forced the closing of the Second Bank of the United States by revoking its charter. The money powers prey upon the nation in times of peace and conspire against it in times of adversity. It is more despotic than a monarchy, more insolent than autocracy, and more selfish than bureaucracy. It denounces as public enemies all who question its methods or throw light upon its crimes. I have two great enemies, the Southern Army in front of me and the bankers in the rear. Of the two, the one at my rear is my greatest foe. Corporations have been enthroned and an era of corruption in high places will follow. And the money powers of the country will endeavor to prolong its reign. By working upon the prejudices of the people. Until the wealth is aggregated in the hands of a few, and the republic is destroyed. President Abraham Lincoln American Civil War By 